So here's a quick run of a project that we've done at Aegis and Runs in the West Otago Hills for Clutha District Health Board. Um, we were looking at some issues that uh, the client, uh, or some of the landowners are expressing with this hairpin and uh, going up through the hills here. Uh, so we went into a, a good flyover, it's quite a large site um, with the P4 uh, PPK processed RTK drone using our propeller aero points and we got a very clean model. Now I'll just flick us into 3D mode here. In fact, no, I'll just do that. So that's us in 3D mesh view of the model. Um, and the mesh came out very, very, very clean. Um, one of the cleanest ones I've done. Um, if I enable the point cloud and actually let this have a chance to kind of warm up, you'll see that uh, some of the detail that we managed to get in the point cloud is really uh, quite outstanding. So uh, here we are, we've managed to get the cattle grids and the fences and we've got a very clean road surface. So we took that uh, cloud and we exported it through Cloud Compare where we did a uh, raster, where we separated off the immediate road for a slight smoothing algorithm where we took the average point height uh, every half a square meter. Um, in the surrounding ground areas, we treated them uh, for the lowest ground point so that we could get terrain. Um, and we brought that information into see this global mapper. So these are the points in global map we brought into space. You can see it's a little bit sparser through the road where we're looking to get a slightly average algorithm to get rid of potential noise from low contrast. We bring this into a global mapper and we create uh, an elevation grid from that. The elevation grid looks like this. Uh, so that is now a unified elevation grid. Uh, we can then do analysis where we generate contours from that grid. Um, and those contours can be a one meter contours, such as this, or we also, if you want to get down to nitty gritty, we can do them at quarter meter contours like this. So using Global Mapper uh, with the contours and the underlying aerial image, uh, we can trace a whole bunch of feature lines very, very quickly. Uh, you can see how we might follow the, uh, the Vs on the channel here, we can trace the center line of the road between contours quite quickly. We can see the top of the bank before it steepens off and goes down. Uh, this is the high bank. You can see here where the top of the bank is as well. You can almost see it just on the aerial image, but the contours do add an easy way to do that analysis. And that allows us to pick, pick up these kind of feature lines. Um, so I've picked up feature lines to do with the top of the bank. I've picked up fences, uh, which probably aren't going to show the, with the contours, but here we go, you can see the fences are in blue. Um, I also brought in the lens property boundaries that are on line, um, and that's the lens property boundaries. Um, and I could use uh, this tool as well to start tracing out obvious landslide features. Again, they kind of pop a little bit more when you have contours where you can see where the changes in gradient are. Uh, there's quite a few ancient landslide features that if you were going to mess around with, you wouldn't want to uh, disturb them. Um, and we also have here, I think maybe you'll be able to see it. Yeah, the gray line is the, is the center line and we have the edge of seal, seal, it's gravel road. So from that, we can export those feature lines back into our global mapper run and we can see we can turn on the road lines um, and those road lines, they take the vertices off the surface through Global Mapper. We can start to bring in the features if we wish to have them highlighted as well. Uh, and all of these uh, statements of data that I've drawn up can be brought into the 3D model for daydreaming. Now, this was some of the uh, realignment optioneering that we did here. You can see these uh, alignment options if I flash them off and on. So as well as using that tool, uh, within Pix4D Cloud, we can go back to the Global Mapper tool and we can look at uh, what we managed to do with uh, one of our CAD designers, as well as having this surface here. Uh, he gave me the design uh, surface, which is 
potentially this was a, an outside design. It was very much a proof of concept that one could actually get rid of all of these hairpins and start to climb up. Now, maybe this is starting to look a bit confusing, but if I turn off the contours uh, and I turn off some of the other stuff that maybe is not that helpful and have a look at this in 3D, uh, let me see if I just drag that across. Is this going to work? There we go. So now if I turn the surface on so that the project spits properly to the surface, we should hopefully see. Uh, yeah. See, you want these things to work, but they never quite work the way you want them to. Let's just put that out of the way. Let's make the surface transparent. One. Okay, let's bring this back and hopefully this will now, yes. So now we have uh, the design surface that's been brought on to our textured surface uh, and we can use this as a full integrated space to daydream about whether or not we like such an idea or maybe where we can talk to the client about uh, perhaps changing the design limitations so that it works uh, a little bit more cost effectively. So I know that this is definitely uh, above and beyond what they were uh, looking for in terms of an actual solution, uh, but this is the code compliant solution. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys what the tool was like in terms of messing around both with the drone flying, cleaning up the cloud, um, and producing something that is, I think, pretty uh, 